What is up everyone and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. So the new season is here and to be honest, as skeptical as I was coming into this one, I'm honestly loving it. But with the new changes to the game, you guys know what that means. That means the meta is going to shift as well. So it's not gonna be as easy to win games as it was last season. And in this video, we're gonna be discussing how the meta has been impacted by these changes so you guys can get a massive advantage of your friends and start winning more games. But before we get started, let's go to the question of the day. Today's question is, what do you guys think of these brand new changes this season? For me, I'm pretty excited about the mobility options now. I think that it brings a lot more dynamic to the competitive scene. Let me know what you guys think. I read all your comments down below. Love to hear them. And if you guys wanna get better at Fortnite, make sure to click that description link below and go to proguides.com and find your pro coach right now. They'll help you with your 90s, they'll help you with your aim, they'll help you win more games this season. All right, guys, let's get right into the video. So as most of us know already, five new unique locations have been added to the game with the release of the second season. These locations include the yacht, the agency, which replaced the middle island, the rig, the shark, and the grotto. These new locations are pretty unique as they offer vaults, if you eliminate a bunch of NPCs and finally defeat the boss, and these NPCs also drop a bunch of loot. The only major change these locations will have is more aggression in the early game, typically around these areas. With the absolutely insane loot you can get from these locations, there are going to be a bunch of players dropping here for the high risk, high reward, similar to how Tilted Towers was back in the day. If you want to live, I definitely recommend avoiding these places, but if you're down for a W key game like myself, then these brand new locations might be pretty fun to land at. Okay, next up is the weapon meta, and boy, do we have some interesting changes here. To start, three weapons have been vaulted, including the spike trap, legendary and epic variants of the SMG, and the bolt action sniper rifle. And as for the unvaultings, well, we've got a pretty long list here. The minigun, remote explosives, suppressed AR, suppressed SMG, suppressed sniper rifle, suppressed pistol, heavy sniper rifle, mythic grappler, mythic drum gun, launch pad, mythic boom bow, and tactical assault rifle have all been added to the game or unvaulted in their previous state. So honestly, the weapon meta looks a little bit more unskilled, with lower skill weapons like the boom bow, minigun, remote explosives, drum gun, suppressed SMG, and grappler being re-added. It looks like the meta is going to be straying away from those mid-game fights as most fights will be less skillful. And the players that land at those new locations will definitely be kitted up like crazy and spread insane loot amongst the lobby when they get eliminated. Early game should be mostly the same with just more players dying. Mid game should mostly even out the population with a tad bit less aggression. And end game should see players dropping like flies with the hardcore spam weapons like the drum gun, suppressed SMG, and remote explosives being re-added. The weapon meta is definitely among the largest changes we've seen thus far. Surprisingly, not much has changed on the utility side of things in the new season, apart from a few quality of life changes and item additions. One pretty large change, however, was to all healing items, including shields and white healing items. You're now gonna be able to throw healing items to other players or to move them over a distance. It doesn't work like the chug splash did where it actually goes into effect. You're able to just throw the item and the item itself just drops onto the ground. This can be helpful if you're rotating into the zone. You can just throw an item, run toward it, throw it again, over and over instead of juggling items. Or if a teammate is a bit away from you and you wanna give them an item. And one minor change is the removal of fishing rods from chests. Thank God for this change because honestly it was really annoying. This means that the fishing rod barrels are going to be much more useful to have as apart from floor loot, they're the only method of attaining them. Also chests will be a lot less cluttered now and will actually find a lot more shields in them. Does this mean no more 20 chests in a row with no shield? I sure hope so. And finally, another fishing change. Fishing holes received a buff, so they no longer disappear after just one or two fish is caught. They tend to last a lot longer in this update, which is pretty cool. Apart from that, the utility and healing side of things really wasn't changed too much. Floppers and slurp fish are still OP, so you should definitely keep them in your strategy as well. There was also a new grenade added, which is one of my favorites in the game right now, which is the decoy grenade, which you basically throw to spawn clone versions of yourself, which basically play out like a bot does. This can be used to throw off your opponents, and if you throw them in a closed off area like a small turtle and wait a few seconds, they'll end up self-destructing and dropping some extra materials, which could be super helpful in some scenarios. 
Finally, the last utility item added was the creeping cardboard, which is similar to the bush from chapter one. You can use a creeping cardboard to essentially hide inside of and jump out to scare opponents and get some kills. Whenever you're running around and you see a box, it's best to take a shot at it and break it, so if a player is inside, they won't be able to jump out and surprise you. Honestly, there wasn't an insane amount of utility item changes, but the ones that were added seemed to spice up gameplay and make it a little bit more unique. Okay, moving on from that, let's talk about the much needed changes to mobility. We haven't heard that name in a while, have we? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, multiple forms of mobility were added to the game so we can finally move quickly, no more walking simulator. The forms of mobility that have been added include grapplers in the mythic rarity, launch pads, which remain the same as they always have been, and now toilets and dumpsters, which will act as sort of a portal. Hiding in one of those will teleport you to a corresponding area. So what does this mean for competitive and casual playlists? Well, this actually is a very welcome change and should increase the skill gap quite a bit. First off, we've got grapplers. Grapplers now come in the mythic rarity. They're great for moving fast if the zone is on you, taking height during fights, or even in endgame as well, but they're a little bit more risky than they used to be when you take height, so they should be used with a bit more caution. Remember that when you grapple, you're completely exposed and do not have a weapon out. Overall, I think it'd be nice to have a lower limit on grapplers, but I think that this is a very good change, especially for when the zone pulls super far and you just need to get there fast. Second is one of my old favorites, the launch pad. There's not too much to say about the launch pad. It's amazing for far zones. It could be pretty helpful in the end game rotations as well, but they're also very balanced as you're pretty exposed when you use them. In competitive, they'll probably shape up to be a risky yet effective way to get into a zone pretty quickly. In casual modes, they'll be used to rotate quickly or maybe used aggressively to style on some opponents. Finally, the portals seem like a pretty good way to reduce the impact of RNG in the early game and can potentially make a difference in loot routes as well. It might end up being viable to loot one part of a POI and then use the portal to go somewhere else for some extra loot. We'll have to wait and see how this shapes up in the competitive playlist. There's no real knowing quite yet. Before the new season, there was a bit of speculation on some giant change that was happening to editing and building. Well, I'm here to say, and quite happy to say, that nothing was changed a crazy amount. One quality of life change though did come to editing. If you're right under a cone and you tried to edit it looking up from below the cone and you wouldn't be able to see the edit itself. This was especially tough because it messed up double edits for a lot of players. This was patched out and you can now edit from this angle. But one really annoying bug was how the editing could stop you from sprinting, but Epic is working on fixing this right now. By the time you see this video, hopefully it's already patched out. But other than that, building and editing have remained largely the same, so all that speculation was false, at least apart from a few minor things. So those were all the changes you should know about. Now we're gonna quickly go over a few minor changes that aren't the biggest, but are definitely helpful to know. First, upgrading a weapon now takes longer. At the actual machine, just by a few seconds, the prices and actual upgrades remain the same though. Second, the emote UI was modified, so it looks a little bit more minimalistic now, but it still has all the same functionality. Although it hasn't been 100% confirmed yet, it seems like linear aim assist has received a nerf from far range, mostly 30 meters and further, so that's something to consider and experiment with if you're a controller player. Some NPCs will be spread around the map in different areas as well, which you can eliminate and get some extra loot from. And finally, a new rare chest has been added. This one is different from the blue special chest we see now. It's the same design as the old red chest we used to have, and these tend to drop a great amount of loot and launch pads, so definitely keep your eyes out for them. Overall, this brand new season was a massive shift in terms of the meta, and while some of the changes are a little bit sketchy, I think that everything will be balanced out given some time. The one thing I would like to see a little bit more of is kind of a balance between competitive and casual. The mythic drum gun, boom bow, and remote explosives, for example, seem fun, but it's kind of weird. It's lowering the skill cap in competitive, which is the exact opposite of what we want to see here. But overall, this is shaping up to be a pretty awesome season, and I'm looking forward to being here with you guys, helping you improve and master the new meta. Once again, guys, it's been Kristoff. Thank you for watching the video. If you guys want to improve at Fortnite, make sure to click the description link below and go to proguides.com to find your pro coach right now. That's it for the vid, guys. Thank you so much for watching and good luck in your next few games.